Rev up your engines. Nikola Tesla says, Scotty, I accidentally started my car twice this morning after it was already running and made a grinding noise. Did I damage my engine? Here's the thing. You don't want to do it. Do it every once in a while. It doesn't hurt anything. But here's the kicker. When you start your car, the starter has a gear on it. They call it the Bendix Drive. And when you start it, it pops out and it meshes with the flywheel on your engine. And that's how it spins. If it's already running and you hit that starter, then that's going to hit a flywheel that's moving and make horrible grinding noises. Now eventually it'll destroy the starter. Starters on most cars aren't all that expensive, but it can also chip the gears on the flywheel. <laughs> and in order to change the gears on the flywheel, you either got to pull the engine out of the car or pull the transmission off of the car and then bolt a new flywheel. And flywheels aren't cheap. They can be 500 bucks and you're going to pay even more than that in labor, taking it off and putting it on. So just make a point of don't start it. Once the engine's running, look, do you see that if you got a tachometer, the tachometer's are, you feel rumbling or you notice that the lights are running on. So, you know, the car is running. Try not to do it because it damages that flywheel. Oof. ERFG Galvez says, Scotty, what do you think of the Toyota RAV older models? Well, they're great vehicles. Actually, I like the older ones better than the newer ones. The newer ones are actually not quite as well built. Uh, my son bought one for his wife uh, a couple years ago, and it's had a few problems. They're minor stuff but still the old ones didn't have any problems till they got to be really old and this one's only two years old those old ones were made like Sherman tanks I mean I got customers with them that have 350,000 miles and these are people that don't even maintain their cars that well and, oh they're not people that are fanatics about maintaining them they just pretty much put gas in and drove them change the oil every once in a while so those older ones if you can find one that doesn't have super high mileage it can be an excellent vehicle to buy Keecha Channel 4 says is a Jeep Liberty 2003 a good car for three thousand dollars i am not a chrysler fan but in 2003 they made them a lot better than they make them today 16 years later since fiat took over and if it runs good and a mechanic checks it out for three grand it could be a decent vehicle but you have to have a guy like me check it out before you throw your money out because there's so many things that can go wrong with those things in the engine the transmission the electronics we real mechanics with our good dealer level scan tools can hook stuff up five minutes we can find out all kinds of stuff if there's any real serious problems with with the vehicle and if we say yeah get, don't buy it don't buy it listen to what a good mechanic tells you but it could be a decent knock around car praise the lloyd <laughs> that's a good one should i go to school to learn to be a mechanic or just try to find a shop to teach me on a job you're better off trying to find a job where you're learning there and you could be going to night school too especially if the place will pay for your education then you are just going straight to a school because generally you get out of one of those schools you're going to get the worst job anywhere anywhere you're going to get the lowest paid job. You might as well start with a job and learn there because hands-on learning is better than anything. My father used to have a guy that worked for him and my father paid to train him and he got ASC certified and really he was still the worst mechanic in the garage. He could do book learning but he wasn't that good at fixing stuff. I mean, that's just kind of the way that it goes. If people have knacks for fixing stuff, generally they can just go and start fixing it. And especially today with the internet where you can look stuff up, get all kinds of information anytime you want. If you got a knack, especially if you're into electronics with modern cars, you better get in a job and then learning on a job than you're wasting twenty to $40,000 of your own money and then find out you're getting a job that's barely paying you more than minimum wage and you got to buy your own tools. <laughs> Night Rider says, what's the best type of car to teach your kids on how to drive? A good beater car, like that video I just made, why it's a good idea to buy a beater car. You want something that's safe, of course, but if you're in a car teaching them how to drive, generally it's going to be an automated transmission. I would say you get an older Toyota Camry, they can take a lot of abuse and still keep going down the line, but they're still safe because even the older ones still had airbags in them. That's a pretty good one. Or like if somebody's got a Ford old LTD or any of the Grand Marquis, any of those big old cars that are safe inside, teach them to drive in that because they are safe. Size does have something to do with safety. There's no arguing that. You know, I mean, let's face it, you're safer in a Camry than you are in a Corolla and you're safer in an LTD <laughs> than you are in like a Ford Escort. Size does matter when it comes to getting in a wreck. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.